There's something so heinous, both sides of the aisle are lining up to fight it. The following is a world-class Bullshitters exclusive. Art is subjective. Something that is ugly can be beautiful. Something dull can be exciting. Entertainment is art, and what's good is again subjective. Unless it's race swapping Cleopatra because everyone is pissed off, and for a really good reason. Normally, these subjects have a right and a left angle. If the right likes something, the left is going to dislike it. If the left hypes something up, the right's going to ignore it. It's a never ending cycle that goes nowhere. But today, that cycle is broken. Netflix is at it again with their questionable docu-series. Last year, the archaeology community petitioned the streaming giant to reclassify the documentary series Ancient Apocalypse as science fiction rather than historical facts. The show basically tossed a bunch of possibilities of an Atlantean civilization influencing all other ancient civilizations around the world before experiencing an apocalypse that wiped them from history. It was a lot of what-its without any proof of evidence. Instead of learning from that mistake, Netflix has released a trailer for a new documentary that seems to keep facts to a footnote. Queen Cleopatra focuses on Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh of Egypt, through expert testimonies and dramatic reenactments. Although the series doesn't hit Netflix until May 10th, it's already showing some massive red flags. The narrative and some consulted experts are making people more nervous than excited. Queen Cleopatra is supposed to be the first in a series of documentaries about African queens produced by Jada Pinkett Smith. The trailer shows a black woman playing Cleopatra, while the expert voiceovers talk about her being an empowered black Egyptian female figure who loved her country. Here's the thing, none of that is technically true. Cleopatra was born in Egypt, making her Egyptian in that sense. However, we know she was a Ptolemaic ruler, making her of Greek and Macedonian descent, not Egyptian. When Alexander the Great invaded Egypt, he left his general Ptolemy there to oversee his claim. Ptolemy and his descendants ruled as pharaohs after Alexander's death. His line ended with Cleopatra VII, who we all think is the famous historical figure known as Cleopatra. Although bits of Cleopatra's family tree are a little unclear, most of her ancestors married their siblings to produce pure colonial offspring ruling Egypt. From art created during Cleopatra's lifetime, we can see they depict her as looking more Mediterranean Greek. Cleopatra had an interesting life. She was the only Ptolemaic ruler that bothered to learn Egyptian, and she fought to keep her throne out of the hands of the Roman Empire. However, it seemed odd to start out telling these stories of African queens with her where there are so many actual African women who led extraordinary lives. Besides claiming Cleopatra was a black woman, the trailer raised another red flag about the show's take on facts in general. One clip showed a woman saying, I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. This is a very dangerous statement to not only include in a documentary, but to highlight in the trailer. The phrase, I don't care what they tell you in school, is a blatant disregard for academia, teachers, and facts. Sure, let's ignore the historical record. Why should we follow evidence? Let's just go with something some random person tells us instead. In an age where cable news networks like to spin fiction as facts for more viewership and books are being banned all over the country, we shouldn't be ignoring the facts that are taught in school. No, public school curriculums aren't perfect and tend to sanitize history, but actual historians compiled most of the materials presented. Just like we had people without any actual medical training who nonetheless considered themselves medical experts during COVID, we have people with no historical training feeling qualified to rewrite history. That article came from the Mary Sue, the feminist website known for having some of the most based takes in entertainment. They're the poster child for the feminist slant, but even they hate this trailer, for all the right reasons. There are bad ideas, and then there is Cleopatra on Netflix. Normally, race swapping is met with articles about racism, angry white people, and calls for society to do better. But Cleopatra is uniting people in the fight against historical revisionism. Historical revisionism is the reinterpretation of a historical account. It usually involves challenging the orthodox views held by professional scholars about a historical event or time span or phenomenon, introducing contrary evidence or reinterpreting the motivations and decisions of the people involved. However, this Cleopatra show falls under the category of historical negationism. Historical negationism, also called denialism, is the falsification or distortion of the historical record. In attempting to revise the past, illegitimate historical revisionism may use techniques inadmissible in proper historical discourse, such as presenting unknown forged documents as genuine, inventing ingenious but implausible reasons for distrusting genuine documents, attributing conclusions to books and sources that report the opposite, manipulating statistical series to support the given point of view, and deliberately mistranslating texts. This show has many people angry due to intentionally changing history. It's getting so heated that the courts are getting involved. An Egyptian lawyer has taken legal action against the popular streaming platform Netflix. The lawyer filed a case with the public prosecutor calling for the closure of the platform after the release of the trailer for the upcoming movie Queen Cleopatra. The film depicts the Greek historical figure as a black-skinned woman, a portrayal that has caused 
controversy and sparked outrage in Egypt. The lawyer argues the depiction is historically inaccurate and offensive to Egyptian people. According to Egypt Independent, Mahmoud al samari demand that legal action be taken against those responsible for the documentary and the management of the streaming platform for its participation in this crime. The complaints submitted against the streaming platform allege that most of what Netflix platforms displays contradicts societal values and principles, especially Egyptian ones, Greek City Times reported. The case is that the documentary promotes Afrocentrism that is widely spread on social media, which have slogans and writings aimed at distorting and obliterating Egyptian identity. The complaint continued addressing public prosecution. In order to preserve the Egyptian national and cultural identity among Egyptians all over the world, we ask and seek that you take the necessary legal measures against this platform. It demanded stopping broadcasts showing all works aimed at obliterating and distorting the Egyptian identity through films aimed at falsifying and distorting history in Egypt. Cleopatra is intentionally changing history because producer Jada Pinkett Smith is entitled and the director is an idiot. After a week of criticism, the director took to Variety to write a very long and very stupid opinion piece. We'll read it and paraphrase the rest because it's dumb, but it includes silly words like massage noir, the hatred for black women. The article starts out with director Tina Garavi stating that she saw Cleopatra as white as a kid and that bothered her. She goes on to say, Born in Iran, I'm a Persian, and Cleopatra's heritage has been attributed to one or another of the Greeks, the Macedonians and the Persians. The known facts are that her Macedonian Greek family, the Ptolemaic lineage, intermarried with West Asian Seleucid dynasty and had been in Egypt for 300 years. Cleopatra was eight generations away from the Ptolemaic ancestors, making the chance of her being white somewhat unlikely. After 300 years, surely we can safely say Cleopatra was Egyptian. She was no more Greek or Macedonian than Rita Wilson or Jennifer Aniston. Both are one generation from Greece. Doing the research, I realized what a political act it would be to see Cleopatra portrayed by a black actress. For me, the idea that people had gotten it so incredibly wrong before, historically from Thea Barra to Monica Bellucci, and recently with Angelina Jolie and Gal Gadot in the running to play her, meant we had to get it even more right. The hunt was on to find the right performer to bring Cleopatra into the 21st century. Why shouldn't Cleopatra be a melanated sister? Because history proves otherwise, lady. And why do some people need Cleopatra to be white? No one needs Cleopatra to be white. You're backpedaling and looking for an excuse. Her proximity to whiteness seems to give her value, and for some Egyptians, it seems to really matter. Again, Tina, you're deflecting from the situation, you lying hack. But let's continue. The article then goes on to say that this lady is better than Elizabeth Taylor. Again, the crux of this Tina's lady's argument is, oh, well, Elizabeth Taylor was white. Our new actress will be better because she's not white. As production got near, I realized the magnitude and political nature of this job. It was important to get things right, but also find a way of telling the story with humanism and nuance. The last thing we needed was another Cleopatra divorced from her womanhood and her power only sexualized. The HBO series Rome portrayed one of the most intelligent, sophisticated, and powerful women in the world as a sleazy, dissipated drug addict, yet Egypt didn't seem to mind. Where was the outrage then? But portraying her as black? Well, perhaps it's not just that I've directed a series that portrays Cleopatra as black, but that I have asked Egyptians to see themselves as Africans. And they're furious for me at that. I am okay with this. While shooting, I became the target of a huge online hate campaign. Egyptians accused me of blackwashing and stealing their history. Some threatened to ruin my career, which I wanted to tell them was laughable. Yeah, lady, you're doing it yourself. I was ruining it very well for myself, thank you very much. No amount of reasoning or reminders that Arab invasions had not yet happened in Cleopatra's age seemed to stem the tide of ridiculous comments. So Cleopatra was black? We don't know for sure, but we can be certain she wasn't white like Elizabeth Taylor. We need to have a conversation with ourselves about colorism and the internalized white supremacy that Hollywood has indoctrinated us with. Most of all, we need to realize that Cleopatra's story is less about her than it is about who we are. It's almost as if we don't realize that massage noir still has effects on us today. <laughs> I had to look up what the fuck massage noir was. It's like a portmanteau of misogyny and noir. It's kind of like the tech noir from Terminator. A random bar? A random word? Sure, we're all affected by massage noir. Let's finish this bullshit. We need to liberate our imaginations and boldly create a world in which we can explore our historical figures without fearing the complexity that comes with their depiction. You mean the fucking truth? Seriously, I have never seen someone so in denial. I'm not gonna make this shitty joke about it's more than a river. Lady, you're fucking nuts. I am proud to stand with Queen Cleopatra, a reimagined Cleopatra, and with the team that made this. We reimagined a world over 2000 years ago where once there was an exceptional woman who ruled. I would like to draw a direct line from her to the women in Egypt who rose up in the Arab uprisings and to my Persian sisters who are today rebelling against a brutal regime. 
Never before has there been a more important time to have women leaders, white or black. Stupidity doesn't have a gender. It affects everyone equally. If you or a loved one think this woman's reasoning is sound, please see a doctor or go to the nearest bridge and take a leap. I've covered a lot of stupid. I've covered a lot of ignorant things. But this takes the cake. This woman is delusional and this show deserves to be shot directly into the sun. At the end of the day, people from every side of the aisle have come together because history is important. The truth is important. And the feelings of this clown and Jada Pinkett Smith's bald-headed double-time and candy ass are irrelevant. Netflix should be ashamed. This isn't doing good for black culture. This isn't doing good for Egyptian culture. This isn't doing good for women. This isn't doing good, period. It's not good to tell your kids or an entire race of people a lie to make themselves feel better. If history can be changed because of what feels right, then I'd like you to meet the first man to walk on the moon, the King of England and the Emperor of Japan, Jeff Hicks. Hopefully this series will be laughed out of existence and Netflix will learn their lesson. Yeah, and if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass when he hopped. So folks, I want to know what you think about this whole maddening situation. I have never, ever seen so much bullshit as I have with this lady, this Tina woman. Oh, I gotta make it about me. Listen, you selfish twit. No one gives a shit about you. That's why you're directing some bullshit documentary on Netflix that's only getting attention because it's bullshit. No one's gonna go watch this show out of outrage. People aren't gonna say, hey, those angry white people, we gotta go watch this show on Netflix to stand with our sister. You're fucking lying about history. That's the problem. Don't try to make it about racism or massage noir or tech noir or whatever the fuck bullshit you wanna come up with to try to defend yourself. Lady, you and the people that worked on this team are a bunch of fucking idiots. Everyone agrees. Don't change history. Don't lie. Don't do this shit. People take issues with history being changed all the time. Statues getting taken down. Revisionist this, revisionist that. Because of the feelings of today. Well, fuck the feelings of today and fuck this production. This is stupid. You all know how I feel and I want to know how you feel right now. So folks, let me know and let this fucking lady know. This is the one time I'm going to tell you, tell this lady that history is important. Go to Twitter respectfully and say, hey, Tina, I disagree with your really stupid fucking take from Variety Magazine. I mean, why do we accept this? We don't. That's why a video like this exists. That's why the fucking Mary Sue of all places, the most feminist left wing bullshit website is like, hey, Cleopatra wasn't black. She was this. History agrees, folks, that Cleopatra looked a certain way. And maybe, just maybe, we should focus on making it look like the historical version and stop obsessing with Elizabeth Taylor. What year did she play Cleopatra? Like 60 plus years ago? Guess what? Get the fuck over it. Yul Brenner was in The King and I. Al Jolson wasn't black. But it's also 2023, so instead of trying to fix the problems of 60 plus years ago, why don't we focus on the accuracy that the audience is like today? That's the important part. That's the thing most people want to see. Nobody wants this person's take, their point of view on history. It's stupid. So folks, thank you for watching. I'm going to get out of here because my blood pressure can't take this bullshit. Ugh. So I'm going to ask you to do what we always do on this channel. Be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. And it means this lady too, Tina Garahi or whatever her fucking name is. Lady, never, ever make anything else. No one's gonna respect it. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no. They're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff. So if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit, not just for us, but 
do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.